Just going to go over the Greenyard reaction. Now this, I'm sure every undergraduate will encounter at some point, and maybe even do this in A-level chemistry or or some something be below degree, whichever uh, country you are studying in. So basically, the uh, Greenyard reagent is an alkyl magnesium halide or an aryl magnesium halide species such as this. Now, the, I won't go into the mechanism of how it's formed. It's, it's, it's formed by uh, usually a single electron transfer route, um, but that's, that's not what I want to discuss right now. I want to discuss uh, the many uh, re reactions you can do with it. So, um, basically, to make the reagent practically, you'll take some magnesium, some solid magnesium, and stir it in some ether or uh, either diethyl ether, THF or something like that. You can even buy the reagents commercially. Um, so you you chip away basically at magnesium exposing the surface because magnesium oxide tends to coat the surface of magnesium and so it makes it unreactive at first. So if you've got your solution of your alkyl halide with magnesium in I'll put I'll put diethyl ether here because that's usually usually used. Uh, so you do it at a low temperature, or you try and, or should I say, you try and control the temperature because it can get really exothermic, and this can be misleading at first because, um, like I say, it's got a magnesium oxide layer which you're trying to get rid of, uh, so you can form this reactive intermediate. So once the magnesium oxide layer does go off magnesium this will go really fast and that's where the exotherms usually kick in so you need to watch out for that if you ever do that in the lab so we have our active green yard reagent here and basically um, I'll use, um, I'll use a, a ketone as an example R2, I'll call this R3 actually this will be the one that we're adding so it actually adds via a six membered ring transition state unless these groups or even this group are uh, really bulky and, and create a lot of steric hindrance so let's, let's have a go at, at drawing this six membered ring now so there's our carbonyl and that's going to coordinate to magnesium put X on there I'll just talk about X in a second as well. Um, and that's going to have um, your R3. Actually, I'm just going to add another carbon in there just so we can get that transfer going across. R3, because that's going to be part of this as well. That's going to coordinate with. Um, Put that on there like that, and then move that across there in R3 here. So you can see it's going to get quite crowded here. And I'm just going to add some dotted lines here. Should have done these dotted lines in red, really. I'll go over that in red actually. Just to show you that this is a transition state and not, uh, not actual. reaction scheme. So that's the transition state. I'll use the double-headed uh, dagger there. That's what I'm used to using for to indicate it's a transition state. So you can see there's two moles of um, of Greenyard reagent to one mole of um, carbonyl or your ketone or aldehyde or whatever you're adding to. And basically you get you get the electron transfer here like this that'll go across there like that that'll go across there like that and this one will transfer back onto this magnesium here to give you one mole of a green yard reagent and then this is going to be coordinated to magnesium so the actual outcome of this I'll just give us a bit more space will be Oh, that should be R2 there, shouldn't I have put R1 again? Actually, the outcome of, of this, oh, now, I'm not drawing any stereochemistry, but this would be a caribal center if R1 doesn't equal R2. OK, 
Okay, and now you've got R3 on there, plus R3. Okay. Okay, so this is um, the intermediate, and then when you, you quench the reagent in uh, some protonated um, solvent or water, you'll get you'll get that cleaving off and replaced by a proton to give you what you expected R2 your new alkyl group on here R3 and an alcohol there so we basically if I draw this in blue we basically took a ketone to an alcohol and it's a tertiary alcohol I'll write tertiary like that because that's what I'm used to writing tertiary. Tertiary I just need to learn to spell. So it's tertiary alcohol from a ketone. Okay. But that's that's not all you can do with green yard reagents. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a few examples now of um, how useful these can be. So that's the, that's the addition, and that's hopefully explaining this. This there's six electrons in here, so it's a aromatic a type of transition state. So six e minus, so six electrons. So it's aromatic transition state. It's not very easy to see there, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six centers, six atoms, uh, with six electrons going around there. Um, like I say, it's not it's not the best transition states I've ever drawn, but I hope you get the the picture. That it's nice stable transition state when it's drawn like that. And it might actually, when you do uh, any chiral additions, or if you've got if you're expecting um, some stereochemistry out of this, then you can certainly draw this um, either in a boat conformation or wh whatever suitable. Or a chair confirmation, whichever is suitable for the the correct stereochemistry, you can actually get a good picture of how that's going to add across there as well, to give you some uh, stereospecific induction uh, rather than stereoselective, I suppose. And uh, there there will be a tutorial on the difference between stereospecific and stereoselective and and chemoselective and all that. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. In case you don't know what I mean by that. Okay, so you, you've got your green yard reagent. Uh, we've got a variety of things we can react with a green yard reagent. And if you if you just well if you do a Google search or or some other search engine search on green yard reagents, uh, you you'll typically have your green yard in the middle like that. And if you have a look at the uh, Wikipedia link that's on this site, you'll certainly see. Uh, this um, on that site as well. So they reacted with a variety of species. For example, um, uh, you reacted with an aldehyde. Then you'll you'll get the, the corresponding alcohol, R1, OH. I'll call that R2. Okay. R2. So that would just come in there and attack. If you react that with uh, an ester, now this is interesting actually, react it with an ester, R1, R3, you've got to be careful with this one because the first time it reacts, you'll get R1, a ketone. R2, which then further reacts with the green yard reagent, even more reactive you see, with the carbonyl there, to give you a double addition. So be careful of things like you need to you need to think about the reaction conditions, the side products that can be formed as well. When whenever you're doing organic chemistry, you think about the reactivity of the product you're forming with the starting material or even the product you're forming with 
the style the other style material rather than the reactive material and how that can react with that too and if this wasn't very big you can even pro probably think under these basic conditions because that pulled a proton off there eventually you know or, or it's left as the um, alkoxide then they could probably come in there and attack that and get transesterification and things like that okay. so yeah so that's how you should be thinking as an organic chemist really so what else have we got we've got we can react it we can go on for a long time really doing this um react it with an amide how's it going to react with an amide hopefully you'll get the you'll get the picture in a minute r3 so that's going to react with the amide come in there and kick that out just like the ester so that should actually have a dotted line to here okay so that'll go through that um that transition state uh, sorry that intermediate you'll react with the amide kick the amine out give you r2 and that can further on further react there like that um there is one good example uh with what's called a wine red amide where you will only get um, the ketone form so it won't go all the way through because obviously this is a side product of this reaction so the wine red amide is um, something that looks a little bit like this um, R2 I'll draw it back to front because give me a bit more room and methyl sorry that should be a methyl that's going to react otherwise and that's a methyl group um, methyl group as well and what this does when it reacts it goes through the transition state there these oxygens coordinate uh, magnesium and stop it reacting further so only on the workup um, do you get um, the final product out of the reaction which would be sorry I'm gonna have to level that's three on I? okay so this reacts here and that will give R2 or R3 and not the alcohol so it won't overreact and that's because this coordinates Mg X like that and stops it reacting further one sorry once once it's uh, reacted there okay so that's the wine right there behind and that'll that'll just give you this um, a ketone product you can also react it with um, um, CO2 to give the carboxylic acid and then it'll stop there. You can, um, if you go on further, I'm not going to go into this now, but if you have um, alpha, beta unsaturated ketones, then you're going to get a mixture, you're going to get Michael addition here, I'll put a link up for Michael addition. Um, so you get addition here and you'll get addition here so you'll get two products from this one so you'll get uh, R2 what if we get there one two three you'll get that plus well you get you'll get a mixture actually okay and you'll get a mixture of both of them so you'll get the alcohol adding so that it will react with the carbonyl again so that the michael addition uh, doesn't work very well for uh grignard reagents but you can put um copper salts in there to make uh, organic cuprates which will attack the and there are, there are a variety of methods to make it just attack in um, in the in the michael addition and there's also methods just to make it attack in, in this uh, one two edition here as well so that'll be one four edition this will be a one two edition so hopefully that covers everything for the green yellow reagent i do encourage you to look this up there's a wealth of uh, reactions out there for you to look at for green yellow reagent and it's it's one you'll probably do uh, in your first year of your um, uh, graduate study and you'll certainly come across it if you go on to further study or 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 research. So that's the Greenyard reaction.